Hello everyone and good evening. Welcome to another episode of Ross A Bespoke Butler School. So tonight we are talking about branding um, and most specifically I'm going to show you a really cool fun way to serve brandy that will entertain and delight um, you know your guests you know if you're a butler uh, your clients or if you're just anyone at home and throwing a dinner party. First of all I'm going to give you a bit of a bluffer's guide to brandy. Brandy is actually pretty simple. It's quite simply um, a distillation um, like most spirits and the, the base of it is grapes. It's made out of grapes. Um, so you know you've got if you think about other things like vodka and whiskey made out of grain and they make a you know like a mash and then they distill it to get the alcohol this is the same basically they make wine and distill it and you get brandy that's in a nutshell it's a bit more complicated than that but in a nutshell it's aged in barrels etc etc now brandy people get confused you know cognac brandy Armagnac, um, you know, what does this mean? Now, basically, cognac is from cognac, Armagnac is from Armagnac, and they're all brandies. Brandy can come from anywhere. You get, obviously, French brandy is the most famous, but then you get brandy from Spain. Spanish brandy is actually very, very good. You can get British English brandy, believe it or not. You can get, um, yeah, brandy from literally from anywhere. Um, so we're just going to look at um, quickly the classifications within brandy. So these two are both cognac. They're both from cognac in France. This is a pretty standard one that you will probably see all over the place in pretty much it's probably the brand leader or between this and Martel are probably the brand leaders Remy Martin this is the VSOP which is stands for very superior old and pale I think I've got that right it's totally random um, words to be honest with you um, but basically it's should we say mediumly good there's also um, VS, um, which stands for very special, but is actually less special. VS is pretty much your, um, your, your cheapest one, really, that you're going to get. Um, but this is the VSOP. This is probably what most people drink most of the time. It's, a, it's of a level that you know, you're going to enjoy. But it's not hugely expensive. It's pretty, pretty reasonable. But you know, I, I think a bottle of Remy like that would be around £30. Then you've got um, XO. So we've got VS, VSOP, XO. So this is XO in the decanter here, um, which stands, believe it or not, for extra old. I'm well aware that extra doesn't start with X before people feel the need to point it out. Um, but that's what it stands for. Just does. There's other um, brandies which are also of an XO standard, like Napoleon brandy is equatable to an XO. Um, it's just slightly different. So um, there's your XO. That tend to, tends to be a lot more expensive. Um, some XO brandies are incredibly expensive, thousands of pounds. Um, some much cheaper, but you know, always relatively expensive. There's a lot of different um, different brands. You know, Remy Martin make one, Hennessy, um, Hein. Hein use um, slightly different names for theirs. They have like um, rare and delicate and things like that. So they, they name them slightly differently. Then we've got um, another sort of brandy just to throw in another, um, which is cider brandy, also known as Calvados. Um, so this cider brandy is from Somerset. Uh, 
this is this is truly excellent actually um and i always like to sort of um support british brands um and obviously the french ones are also excellent don't get me wrong but um this somerset cider brandy is it's a different flavor it's very mellow i would highly recommend it and it's a lovely talking point if you bring this out after dinner i can um you know practically almost guarantee that most of the people at dinner will not have had it before which is always a good thing okay so that's our basic rundown of what brandies are um, now i'm going to show you um, a cool way to serve it now we always talk about what temperature we serve different drinks um, and quite often there's two things to look at there there's tradition versus what's best for the flavor etc etc with brandy i'm actually gonna side with tradition tradition says to serve it slightly warm and i think a slightly warm brandy is absolutely lovely you know some people out there are going to put ice in their brandy and things like that but you're really going to take um, a lot of the flavor away if you put ice in your brandy if you want to put coca-cola in your brandy i don't think this is the video for you you probably want to go to watch i don't know um some sort of monster truck videos a lot of monster truck videos on YouTube probably watch one of those. I'm only joking, but but I'm not. Um, so, in fact, I've got a good story. Uh, years and years ago, I was working at an event. It was um, uh, the Hunt Ball, actually. Um, some of you may be aware of the sort of um, the, the hunting, like with dogs, that we used to do in the UK. We don't anymore. Um, but I was working doing one of these Hunt Balls. And very, very diverse set of people at these hunt balls, you know, from super posh to real salt of the earth. And then what you've also got are the people who are trying to be posh. The hooray Henry's, the sort of people trying to social climb. So <clears throat> I was serving drinks and this uh, gentleman came out, he said, uh, What's the what's the most uh, expensive brandy you've got? And I, I think I can't remember what it was, but it was it was an XO brandy. It was pretty expensive. It's like I have a double a double shot of that uh, and Coca Cola with ice, fill up to the top. Uh, I was I'll be honest, I was a little surprised. You know, I was like, so you, you know, this is a couple of hundred pound glass of brandy you'd like me to put ice and fill it up with coca-cola yes that's what he wanted so of course as i always say as a butler you do whatever they ask just make it so i made it and uh gave it to him a gentleman who'd been just behind him walked over to me said excuse me did you did he just drink that brandy with coca-cola and ice I said, yes, yes, sir, it is. Do you know what you should have done? You should have dragged him outside and shot him like a dog. So <laughs> people sometimes have some quite strong opinions on how things should be served. I mean, that's a true story. Um, I, I think he was joking. I don't think he thought I should have shot him because I know he would never have shot a dog. So... Anyway, moving on, let's show you how a nice way of serving this brandy. So what we need is we need two brandy glasses. Now, I love a nice, good quality, big brandy balloon. This is a 26 ounce brandy balloon. So this, I mean, that's the volume of the whole glass. But to, to clarify, you're only ever going to put a bit in the bottom. You're not going to... 26 ounce, that's bigger than a large Starbucks. You, if you filled that whole thing full of brandy and drunk it, you would be on the floor without doubt, no matter who you are. So 
bit in the bottom so you can swirl it round. A beautiful thing to hold. Realistically, does the vessel make any difference to the flavour of the drink? Not, not really, no. I mean, okay, this is a nice shape for nosing, so it keeps the scent, keeps the smell in there, which is, which is nice, it's good. Um, but other than that, doesn't, doesn't really make a difference, but it's just nice, it's just nice. And again, some people feel very strongly. Um, I have, you know, in the situation where if you haven't got the exact shape of glass that someone wants a drink served in, they, they say, well, I have a different drink then if you haven't got that glass. You know, people feel very strongly about it. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to pour myself a shot of this Remy Martin. I'm a big Remy Martin fan, by the way. Like I say, it's not particularly expensive, but it's genuinely very, very pleasant to drink. So it cheers. It's sante. Very nice. There's no particular reason for me to drink that right there. I just wanted to. Simple as that. So, take your second glass and we're going to turn it upside down. I know you think I'm a bit mad right now, don't you? But what I'm going to do is pour just a little teeny bit in the top there. You see that? Hopefully. I'll try and show you this from a couple of different camera angles so you can see what I'm doing. Now, we're going to set light to it, obviously. If there's one thing I like, it's combining alcohol and flames. So let's... Well, I knew that wouldn't work the first time. scent from that once you've warmed it. Beautiful. Okay, and that is it. And just warming it up like that, it's nice and warm, that just gives you a lovely sort of um, feel to your brandy and I hope you'll enjoy it all the more. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, before you go, little tip, whatever you do, don't try and blow this out. Because if the brandy is on fire and you blow it, the brandy will just go onto the table and you'll set fire to your table. So just let it burn itself out, okay? Safety first. Thanks very much. Goodbye, please subscribe. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye. There we go, let's, there we go, not burning, take two, so I've been stealing the alcohol out of my brandy I think, there we go, now it's, okay that's just weird, why is that not burning, take three.